Okay, so let's look at the monkey now because this is kind of another another aspect of of modeling this stuff that you'll probably encounter. That was just a bonus. Um, I have no idea why I gave it an earring. So here's the monkey. As you can see, and as you probably saw in the lighting episode, it, it's quite rough around the edges, right? It's, it's got a lot of hard edges. And if you think of people and animals and things like that, they don't usually really have hard edges like that. That's not normal. That's not what we think of when we think of organic shapes. The thing that controls the smoothness of an object in 3D applications uh, are referred to as subdivision surfaces. I don't know really enough about 3D modeling to exactly know what that's referring to, but I do know that right now we have lots of faces, but not enough faces that it looks completely smooth, right? So we need to do something with these, with this vector, with these vector shapes to kind of smooth them out and disguise the, the, the hard edges. If you, let me get rid of this transform tool because we're not going to use that right now, the transform palette rather, in. So here's the monkey. If we go over to the properties palette, you might recall that we've got the object data. We used that when we were playing around with the, the light the light color, the light shape, and stuff like that. We've got materials and textures. I think we sort of used that. One we haven't really touched yet is the object modifier. Object modifier can be a lot of different things. It looks like a wrench. If I click on this button, you're going to see a lot of properties that we can add to things. We're going to go over a lot of these, actually, uh, in the future. But right now, we're just going to concentrate on subdivision surfaces. I think I've heard the term subsurf as the sort of cool, hip 3D modeler way of referring to this. So subsurf, or subdivision surface, as you can see already, we've basically subdivided all of those, well, surfaces by, you know, some, some, some multiplier. And you can risk as much smoothness and uh and and beautiful organicness as you as you dare as you might be able to tell i've you know just kicking it up to five and five view six render has has it has definitely kind of slowed my computer down a little bit um so yeah this is the sort of thing that you probably don't want to do while you're actually animating the stuff. This is kind of the stuff that you want to apply later on once you've done all your heavy lifting and you're ready to just send the job to to be to be rendered. Now if we go into edit view, as you can as you might be able to tell, we haven't actually divided up the the vectors that make this monkey up, right? I mean, all of these faces look pretty familiar, right? That this is what she looked like before we did the subsurf, mul uh, the subsurf uh, modifier. So basically, what we've done is we've kept the sort of the cage vector shape, and then we've kind of modified the the way that it's that it's seen and filled up. So if we take a surface, we're no longer actually moving that, you know, every, look at that, Let's see how the the face kind of hovers over the surface. So it's, it's more like we're, we're almost affecting that surface in some way. We're kind of, it, it's, it becomes, I don't know, softer, I guess, and, and it, less precise in a way, but, but a lot more organic. So there you go. That's, that's making things smoother. Um, if it's a complete entire monkey head, yeah, it's going to slow your computer down a little bit. If it's more of like a cylinder or something like that, then you might be able to risk implementing that early on if you're just animating some text flying by a smooth cylinder against a spacey background. 
So there you go, that's um, subdivision surfaces to make things smoother. Now let's take a look at something that's equally interesting. Doesn't really have a whole lot to do with 3D modeling exactly, but I kind of associate it with that same realm because it's kind of the the object's center point. So if I, cl I click on any of these things, you, you notice this big orange dot that always appears, kind of like the dead center of that object. And if we switch over to the wireframe view with the Z key, we see that that, if you look at it at different angles, you know, I mean, that, that point, and we call it the origin point, at least I call it the origin point, is, is in the center of that object. No matter how large that object is, that little orange circle is in the middle. If I rotate that cube, for instance, it rotates, it pivots around that, uh, well, pivot point, that, that origin point. Same goes for the uh, sphere. Same will go for the monkey head. You can change that if you want to. Now, a lot of times that is exactly what you want. You want something to kind of rotate in space, and that's good. That's exactly the look that you're going for, but it's not always. One thing that you can do is, well, first of all, one thing that you should do is look at this menu. This is the pivot menu, pivot point menu. And you've got a lot of different choices here. So we'll, we'll kind of, we'll start, well, bounding box center is the, the center of, well, the bounding box. And you can see your bounding box always like that. So it takes the object, it puts a box around it, measures the, complete center of that of that of that space of that volume of that mass whatever and and it makes that the pivot point the the object rotates around that so that's more or less you we could just call it the dead center 3d cursor is the one that i i find myself using fairly often and this gives you a lot of power because you can place that 3d cursor anywhere really let's put it down there at the corner of the box and now if i rotate look at that suddenly starts rotating around that 3D cursor. Do it again, and now it rotates around there. Do it again, rotates around there. It's really great. If I put the 3D cursor way back there, then I've got a completely different kind of rotation. So this is really powerful. That that's that's one that I, I tend to I tend to find myself at least using if if not for the actual animation, just for kind of playing around and seeing how things might might animate. So uh, individual origins, that's, um, that's, that's the origin point of that object. That's just the inbuilt origin point. No matter how much you distort that object, that's going to be the, the origin point of that object. Median point is kind of cool because, let's scale this down. If we have two objects selected, then we take the point between their origins, and then that's the new pivot point. So that's kind of nice for relational rotation. And then finally, there's the active element. So the active element, if you have a number of things uh, selected, is the one with the bright orange selection around it. So these are slightly red. That one's bright orange. And so if I rotate now, it's going to choose the active element as its pivot point. If I wanted to change that, I could hold the shift key down and select, for instance, the cube. Now they're still all selected, but the cube is the active element, and now they're all rotating around the cube. I've, to date, never used that one, but I'm not saying that that means it's not useful. I've just actually haven't had a chance to actually use that myself. So there you go. That, that's, um, that's pivoting. Last but not least is how to select lots of objects. So if we have three objects on our um, stage, in our world, and we want to select... Well, right now I've got one selected, right? Maybe I want to deselect it. The, the obvious way is to just select some other object, but maybe that's not what we want. So if you hit A, that toggles your selection. Now it's back on, now it's off. A. Now if I've got... If I hit A again, then it selects all objects got my sphere selected, my, yeah, UV sphere selected. I'll hit A and it will go away. 
and then A again, and it will select everything. I'm not clicking or anything like that, it's just, it's A. All or nothing, or an individual, and then off, and then all. So you can mess around with just, just A. Not Alt A, not Shift A, just A. And of course I could select them all, hit X, and, del oop, and delete. Now they're gone. We could do the same thing with in edit mode. So if, we're, if we've got an object, maybe we're editing it or we're about to edit, we think we're doing what we want to do, and then we realize that that's not actually what we wanted to do at all. A, it'll do, deselect them, hit A again, it will select them all. And that's about it. I think that's about as much 3D modeling as I really know. So that's probably enough to get you started for sure. Again, you don't have to be a 3D modeler to be brave enough to use some of these 3D objects and to then manipulate them so that they can actually contribute to your, your scene in some way. Enjoy.